from the NIV. It says, and uh, it says, we are to ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And that's what we're here to do tonight, to ask, give God all of the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. And we just pray right now that the Holy Spirit will have his way as we, as I share the word. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right, praise God. We're going to be turning to uh, text we'll be taking from 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Praise God. Hallelujah. My wife already told me, and I will not do what she told me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen, Pastor Tony. We, 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 we are growing, man. We are growing as, as, as husbands. And we are growing as fathers. Amen. Amen. Praise, Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You can understand with me real quickly as I yes, read from yes, the scripture? Yes. Praise God. First Timothy chapter three. We, uh, First Timothy chapter three, verse one through one through sixteen. The Apostle Paul writing to writing in uh, uh, to the new pastor Timothy. He says, "Here's a trustworthy saying: If anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task." Now. The overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness nor violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take of God's church. How can you take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or in King James Version, a novice, or he may become conceited and fall under the judgment as the, the, as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Deacons, likewise, are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in, in much wine, and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of faith with, clear and cons with, a, with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives are to be women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain the excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Also, I hope to come to you soon. I am writing to you these instructions. Say instructions. 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 So that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar, the foundation of the truth. Behold, all questions, the mystery of, the, of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And of course we know he is coming back again. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. <clears throat> well, tonight I want to share on, Pastor <clears throat> asked me to share on that and on this chapter of First Timothy. And the title of the message tonight would be Truth is fundamental. Truth is fundamental. See here in first, uh, when you look at the, the, the New Testament, in the New Testament you see 1 Timothy, and you see 2 Timothy, and you see Titus. <clears throat> These are epistles that were written by Paul. 
And these epistles are known as the pastoral epistles, or the letters. These were letters that Paul wrote to uh, the, the, the churches that he, he, he overseed, or he was an overseer of, or he was a bishop over these this churches. Um, you know, we have, we have a good example today of, of one of the overseers because of the church we are going to right now, Faith Fellowship, Pastor Demona is an overseer of different, uh, different uh, ministries. You know, in other words, um, young men and women came up from out of that ministry and then they were sent forth into other uh, places of the earth to, 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 to start a new work and to, to spread the gospel. Amen? Amen. So here in, here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 16, the Apostle Paul, in his letters to a young Pastor Timothy, gives him instructions to follow when given leadership responsibilities Hallelujah. to members of a growing church. Come on. Members of a growing church. Whenever you have a growing church, you know, you also, you also have growing issues. Amen. You know? mm -hmm. And so, and so, so, so uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, who was a man of wisdom, you know, and, and he, he understood that, hey, listen, you know, uh, man, this church is growing. Uh, we need to do something here. Yes. We can't just keep going the way we're going. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, is that this? You know, if if, if you're gonna start a family and, and you start having a whole lot of kids, you need to do what? You need to prepare to receive those un incoming families that yes. you are bringing yes. into the world. Good work. Good work. The same thing here in the, in, the, in, the, in church of God, in the yes. in the church of the body of Christ. This is God's church. Uh, friendship, friendship, world outreach church. It is God's church, but it is under the leadership of Pastor Tony and Pastor Tina. And so while this church begins to grow now, God expects for us as leaders to make sure that before we give people positions of leadership within the growing church, Amen. that they are taught in the word of God. Hallelujah. It says here in, in, in my notes, this, as this church grows, as the church grows, how um, the Apostle Paul in his letter wrote to young, young Timothy and gives him instruction to follow when giving leadership responsibility to members of a growing church. As the church grows, how should he wisely give leadership responsibilities to its members? In 1 Timothy chapter 1, again in verse 3, the Amplified Bible says, as I urged you when I was on my way to Macedonia, stay where you are at Ephesus in order that you may warn and admonish and charge certain individuals not to teach a what? A different doctrine. Amen. Amen. There was a problem that was beginning in this church. Amen. You know, this church that young Timothy, imagine young Pastor Timothy. Yes. Young Pastor Timothy is their pastor in this church and lo and behold, He's taught, he's taught receiving or, he, or, or problems start happening in his church that he has no clue, well, how do I handle this? Let me use a good example. In our society today, we have a certain group, okay, that is promoting same-sex marriage. Yes, yes, yes. We have, we have, we have even churches yes, yes. of ordained pastors, right? right? Who are, are, who are sanctioning this thing because what? They are not sticking to the fundamental truth. Yes, yes, come on. The truth is fundamental. God's truth will never change. Hallelujah. He's not a God that, he's a God that what? Changes not. Yes, yes, yes. So the fundamental, we have to stick with the basics. Say stick with the basics. Hallelujah. Stick to the basics. Yes, one plus one is always going to equal two. Yes, yes. Two plus two is always going to equal five. No, yeah. Nah, I just got you there, man. Two plus two is always going to equal four. You see, that's what I'm saying. I did that purposely because there are times when we are listening to teachings, but we're not hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Yes, Lord. It's, it's very imperative that I, as a teacher of the Word, it's very imperative that Pastor and Pastina, as a teacher of the word, my wife as a teacher of the word, yes. for the others who in here who are teachers of the word, that we teach the word yes, yes. according to the fundamental truth, Come on. the basics. Yes, Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Yes, Lord. That means that 
There's only one way to the Father. It's through Jesus Christ. Going back to what I was saying before, there are certain people in our society, secular, the secular humanists, uh, who, are, who are promoting this type of doctrine. Doctrine, another word for doctrine is teaching. You know, they are promoting this. Yes. Same-sex marriage. No. The Bible says what it says. Yes, Lord. We all know what it says, so let's follow it. Yes. The Bible will not change to fit or to suit. Oh, let's put it this way. I am, if, if, if I am 180 something pounds, I am not going to go to a tailor and ask him to make me a suit that is much bigger than what I can wear. Amen. Amen. I am going to ask him to give me that tailor fit suit. The word of God is tailor fit. Yes. The word of God is a tailor fit word. It will not change it will not get out of sight matter of fact the word of god fits everyone properly yes Lord. hallelujah it fits everyone properly you can anyone can put this word in and it's gonna fit you oh man you're gonna look sharp you're gonna yes. like man yes yes i am a bad man i look so sharp today man the word of god is quick and powerful sharper than the toward the sword yes. piercing to the divine the son of the soul and spirit yeah. the joint and the marrow and the stirring up the thoughts and the intents of the heart yes. oh my god you don't want to mess with me today because i got the power of the word i got the holy spirit yes dynamite Glory it's an explosion coming on an explosion when you come on the scene with the word of God thank you and you come on the scene with the Holy Spirit thank you something is gonna happen wow. Hallelujah. something is gonna happen see I, I I I was never I was never I was never given the privilege to go into the dance hall and the club and all that stuff because see my peers men I love my peers because they, they got so strict on me I couldn't go to no party and stuff like that I didn't miss it either. Now that I'm where I am, but back then I used to miss it. When my friends were running to the club and all that, man, I, you better believe it. I wanted to go to the club with them too. But I knew better because the fundamental truth of Mr. and Mrs. Ewer said, listen, boy. Yes, yes. I dare you to go to that party, man. I dare you. Go. Go and see what happened to you. A last time you go. <laughs> in a little Jamaican accent. Yes. Of course, but I tell you, the word of God doesn't change. Yes, yes. And so here it is in this context. In this city, you had young Timothy, the pastor, Pastor Timothy, still wet behind the ears. Uh, you know, kind of shaky on some of his doctrine. He might not be so sure about what, if he actually believe what they believe. But no, you know what? He still was full of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Why I can say that? Because the scripture tells me that, that he followed the very same fundamental truth of his grandmother Eunice yes. and also of his mother. Yes. And this is the same thing that Paul encouraged Timothy. Listen, this is why Paul is now saying here in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3, it says, I urge you, I urge you when I was on my way to Macedonia, stay where you are. Stay where you are at Ephesus in order that you may do what? You may warn, you may admonish, and you may charge certain individuals not to teach any different doctrine. Yes, yes. If anyone is teaching a different doctrine, do not listen to them. Amen, amen. If I begin to teach a different doctrine, do not listen to me. Listen to the fundamental truth yes. of what God's word is saying. This verse reveals to us that the Apostle Paul was on a mission trip to Macedonia. He admonished, encouraged young Pastor Timothy to stay in Ephesus and continue to shepherd the young believers. It would be crazy if my wife and I, when we, when we brought Rachel home as a young baby, it would be very crazy for us to just leave Rachel and say, Rachel, God bless you. You're so beautiful. What a... Beautiful little girl. Rachel's taught, you know, here's a bottle, feed yourself. You know, here, you know, Rachel, let me, let me, let, as your dad, I'm your dad, I'm your great dad, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell, show you where the kitchen is, I'm going to show you where the refrigerator is with the, with the milk in there, I'm going to show you where all of these things is. You know, little Rachel, when you're ready and to eat, go ahead and take it and, and, and grab yourself a bottle and feed yourself. 
No, that, that's totally ridiculous. Amen. Well, it's the same thing here. Young Pastor Timothy, his responsibility was to make sure that the young believers that he was pastoring were, were protected from false doctrine, were protected from false teaching, and he was making sure that they followed the fundamental truth of the gospel as he had received it. Thank you, Jesus. As, like I said before, Timothy received that same fundamental truth, not only from his grandmother, and his, but his mother, and he also was receiving it from his, uh, his teacher, the, uh, Paul the Apostle. Amen. Pastor Timothy was pastoring a young grown church in the city of Ephesus. Yes. The Ephesians, here's what the, 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 the believers in Ephesus did. The believers in the, the the people of Ephesus, not the believers, the people of Ephesus worshipped, uh, worshipped a god called the Ascetic, go Ascetic Goddess. A-S-I-A-T-I-C, Ascetic Amen. Goddess. Mm. This Ascetic Goddess was also known as Diana mm. or Artemis. Well, Artemis was also the protectress of youth, especially of her own sex. So she was a woman goddess. And in Ephesus, these, the, 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 these people who had this religion was now trying to use that religion to infiltrate yes. the new believers, Come on. to bring confusion among those. Good word. <clears throat> Paul was there to remind Timothy, Timothy, remember what you were taught. Yes. Remember your foundation. And so Timothy followed likewise. Thank you. It's amazing about this, this group that worship uh, this goddess. For the, what they did is that in order to appease their God, and this wouldn't fare well for us as men, yeah. or young boys in those days. Yes. It wouldn't fare well for us. Because see, in order for this goddess to be appeased, what had to happen is that these young men would be tied up, tied their hands behind their back, and they would be whipped until Blood came from their body to give appeasement to this goddess. So, boys, young men, no, we wouldn't want to be in the city of Ephesus around that time period. Thank God we weren't there, yeah. and thank God we no longer have to be subjected to things like that. Paul urged Timothy to stay true to the gospel. You were taught, and you were, and you must warn them and charge them those who teach another gospel or a different, a different uh, doctrine. Amen. The Apostle Paul was a, script, was a spiritual father yes. figure to young Timothy. The scripture never revealed Timothy's biological father, but we see that in Acts chapter 16 verses 1 to 3, his father is only identified as being Greek and his mother was Jewish. So there you have, you have a mixed family. Timothy meant, the name of Timothy meant venerating God. To venerate, it means to regard or to reverentially respect or admiring differences or to honor. It's to regard with reverential respect or admiring difference to honor. And that's what Timothy did. Yes, yes. He venerated the God that he served. Hallelujah. The meaning of Timothy, Timothy's name, it reflected in his reverential respect and honor to his God. The Apostle Paul, even though he was miles away from Timothy, continued to admonish and encourage Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 15, Paul wrote, although, although I hope to come to you before long, I am writing these instructions to you so that, two things, you may know how you ought to conduct you may, you may know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God. Yes. And secondly, that the prop and support of truth may stay. Yes. In other words, the truth will never change. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse is 15. And the second half of that, it says, you will know how, to, how people ought to conduct themselves. Yes, yes, Lord. Let's stop right here. Come on. How people ought to conduct themselves. There is... A certain expectation yes. when I was growing up, <laughs> and I use myself as an example because you see, I can relate to that, and I'm sure you can relate to that. When we were growing up, there's a certain expectation that my mom, mom and dad expected before I even leave the house, okay, to walk down the street, I had to 
pres be presented a certain way. You know, like nappy head. <laughs> no, with, wow. with, 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 with stuff in my eyes, you know, like I just rolled out of bed and saw a walk out. No, there is a certain expectation yes, yes. that my peers require. Yes. May I say this, that God has a certain expectation from those who he calls his children of oh, yeah. God. Yes, Lord. God expects us to, as, to, to, to carry ourselves or to present ourselves in a manner that will bring glory and honor to his name, in a manner that will not bring this cord to anything else. So therefore, we have to allow ourselves to walk in the right way, the way that is pleasing unto God. We see here in John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. That is a fundamental truth. That is a basic truth of the gospel that we say we believe in. That's a basic truth of our faith in Jesus Christ. We cannot be wishy-washy. We cannot change our position because we find ourselves in an uncomfortable place where people are now looking at us and saying, well, are you one of those holy rollers? Are you one of those faith believers? Um, you, I, I'm sure you're one of them. No, and then you start backing off. Amen. God wants, doesn't, doesn't want us to back off. He wants us to be bold. Yes, Lord. Amen. Here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, the apostle Paul wrote, to, wrote write this letter to Timothy and is in encouraging Timothy, listen, these are the things I want you to establish in the church that you are pastoring. Amen. If anyone is desiring, and then he, there are two things, two offices that he says, if anyone is desiring for. Yeah. The office of a bishop or elder and the office of a, of a, a deacon. Yes, if anyone is desiring to be a, a, a bishop, the bishop has to meet these requirements. Amen. Amen. The bishop can't just appoint himself to be the bishop. That's right. That's right. Come on. The bishop can't just go to Walmart and get himself a name tag, you know, Amen. bishop, slap it on his uh, dead, on his front of his office and uh, put a nice bishop stick on the back of his car and all of a sudden he's a bishop. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Teach, teach. <laughs> I mean, I just, a self-made bishop. Go ahead. No, because everyone who is in leadership has to put themselves under some form of leadership right. to be accountable, accounted to. I have to give myself account, I give account to someone. I cannot just make myself a bishop. Amen. So here it is, Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, here are the guidelines. And if you turn with me again to 1 Timothy, yes, Lord. and chapter 3, and you see in verse, uh, verse 2, Thank you, it says, Now the overseer must be above reproach. The husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach. Mm, thank you, we just stop right there. We're not going to go to all of it because I know that if you go to all of it, you wouldn't have enough time to cover all of that. Huh. But let's just touch on the first part of that. Thank you, Jesus. The, uh, the, that the overseer or the bishop, the requirements that this individual must meet. Yes. Because there are people that say, well, I want to be a bishop. Amen. You know, I mean... I want to be a, a deacon, I want to be whatever, but only those who have been anointed and appointed to yes, be yes. should be in those places of leadership according to the word. Good word. It says here in verse 2 yes. that they must be above reproach. What do you mean above reproach? Blameless. Be above reproach. Hallelujah. I mean, you must have a good, a good uh, credibility. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. Your, your, your credit, your yes must be your yes, and your no must be your no. Come on. You, you, you must be a man of your word, or, or, or you know that if you say you're gonna do something, yes. then you're gonna do it. Come on. And, and because God is a man of His word. Hallelujah. You know, if God tells you He's gonna do something, yes, He will. He's gonna do it. Thank you, Jesus. Provided that we believe that He's gonna do it. Thank you. So this bishop. According to the qualifications, uh, Paul tells Timothy, listen, if they're going to be a bishop, they have to meet these requirements. Well, I don't have to do it. 
I know sometimes people say, oh man, I don't have to do it. You know, I don't have to subject myself to the pastor, what the pastor is saying. I mean, I'm just, I'm just as anointed as a pastor. You know? I, I, I'm just as anointed as anyone. Why do I have to subject myself to that? Because it honors God. Yes, it does. Come That's the only reason why. Because it honors God. Everything that we do must lead back to honoring God. And if it's not going to honor God, then we shouldn't do it. The fundamental truth. Fundamental, the word fundamental is serving as an original or generating source. It's serving as an original or generating source. Basic or relating to essential structure of central importance. Here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 16, Apostle Paul gives Timothy the structure to follow in selecting or, or placing people in leadership yes, yes. positions. In verses 1 to 7, specifically addresses the, address, the, the office of the bishop or elder. Yes. In verses 8 to 12, it addresses the office of a deacon. Right. And again, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, we see the word desire. Yes. If someone desire. The word desire, origo, O-R-E-G-O. This word origo, it means to stretch one's order, to touch or to grasp something. So that you, 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 I want to be a bishop. I, I want to be, you're stretching for it. But in stretching for it, you have to, we have to make sure that now we are, we are in compliance to what the requirements are. Yes, yes. Paul tells Timothy that anyone who sets his heart on being a bishop must be blameless. The word bishop is episkopos. This word episkopos it means to look over, yes. someone who's going to look over, who someone's going to oversee, yes. someone who, who's going to super, be a superintendent yes. to exercise or oversight or to care over. Yes. I mean, when you're going to care over the people of God, we want to make sure we care over the people of God with true care. Yes, yes. We can't, we can't just handle people any old rough That's way. Right. That's right. We, we have to be led by the Spirit of how we yeah. need to handle or uh, how we have to lead the people of God. So uh, again, this word, uh, episcopus, is someone who passionately longs after something. Glory. The expanded translation says, says about this verse. If a certain one is seeking the office of an overseer, he passionately desires a good work. It's a good thing. It's a good work to, to be a bishop. It's a good work to be to, to be in the office of a deacon. Yes, yes. First Timothy chapter three, verses two to seven gives the qualifications that should be met before the individual is given place of leadership in the office of the bishop. Hallelujah. Being blameless is one who cannot be laid on. Yes, yes. One who cannot be laid on. You know, let me touch on that. You know, it's, it's something when people know that they have something against you, that they, they know your background. Yes, yes, Lord. When someone, when they people know your background, they know that you had some dirt back there. Come on now. That's happened to me before. Yes, yes, yes. You know, when people know they have dirt on you. God don't have no dirt on me. Come on. God has no dirt on you. Thank because you know what he says? As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transmission from you. Amen. God don't, God don't put... Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you that he does not put no dirt on me. He has no dirt on me or you. Thank you that he don't hold things against me like how... You know what? How I have held things against people. I'm just going to use myself tonight as an example. Because you know what? The Bible tells me that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God that he doesn't hold no dirt on me. Thank God that he, 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 he washed me white as snow with his blood. Amen. Thank you that he washed me. You know? And now when I use this encouragement and I wipe my Guess what? Dirt still comes off. But when the Father in heaven wipes me, <laughs> the blood comes uh, off. Blood. Ah, ah, amen. Woo. Yeah. When he wipes me, Go ahead. no, the blood stays on, but the evidence of what is covering me shows up. Thank you, Jesus. 
You see, you see, it, 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 it is the it is the devil's it is the devil's plan, man. Come on, babe. Come on. To 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 bring accusation against the people of God. Amen. That's that's what he does. He sits up all night on his on his <laughs> Apple computer. <laughs> I can just see that old slow foot, as my mother would say. Yes, yes, yes. Slow foot, what you doing now, man? <laughs> well, you know what, man. <laughs> Let me see here. Who can who can I delete today? Yes, yes. Who, who can I accuse falsely today? Amen. Amen. Then I see him pull out his iPad. Yes, yes. <laughs> Brings up the picture. Good word. Yes. Oh, oh, you think you're bad, no? You call yourself a man of God, huh? Yes. Oh, yeah, you call yourself a woman of God? Oh, oh, you, oh, I guess you didn't see this. Replay. Oh, how about that? Yes, yes. How about that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm showing you that my iPad. I'm showing it. How about that? Amen. Do you, do you, you remember you remember when you, when you took that, that $10 bill off of Sister Lou's table? <laughs> Uh, you, you remember the time when you went, you snuck into Sister So and So's uh, house and went and had sexual relationship with his do with her daughter. Uh, you, uh, yes, I'm gonna go there. You, 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 you remember when you looked at Sister So and So's wife and 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 you, you, you know, you, you really shouldn't be looking at her that way. But God. But God don't do that. What God? God says, if I forgive you, yes, you are forgiven. You. However, now, going back to the, our context, and we must say in context of what we're talking about in the scriptures, Paul was addressing Timothy, this letter to Timothy, telling Timothy, Timothy, I know you've got some issues here coming up in the congregation, the yes. body that you're teaching yes. right now. Stay with the fundamentals, son. Don't, don't, don't shift to the left. Yes, yes. Don't shift to the right. Stay right on point. Hallelujah. And even when people come against you, you because it's not a popular message to teach or to preach, Amen. Come on. stick with the word of God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to, uh, for, I think it's 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 8. All right, come on. 1 Samuel chapter 8. First Samuel chapter 8. Where this is where this is where Israel wants to be wanted a king like everybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be, I want a king like everybody else, God. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I mean when I look over when I look over the border, <laughs> you know, the Mexican border, man, I see everybody over there, man, they're doing their thing and they seem to be having a good time. And we want to be like them. And here's what God says. I think I need to put my glasses on so I can read the word correctly. Praise God. In verse, in verse 5, actually start at verse 4. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 4. So the what? Who gathered? Elders. The elders. Come on, come on. <laughs> the bishops. The, 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 the bishops, the elders gathered. Of, the, so the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Your son do not walk in your ways. His sons had gotten away from the fundamental truth right. of their father. That's right. Come on. Your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations. But they said, give us a king to lead us. This, when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. As a leader, yes, Lord. When, you are, when you are leading a group of people, for the glory of God, and they come against you, and they speak to you that way, and you get discouraged. Don't go running to the neighbor, Amen. the missionary saints and friend. Amen. Run to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what Samuel did here. Thank you, Lord. He says, and Samuel, verse seven, and Samuel told him. Thank you, Lord. 
He prayed to the Lord, and, and the Lord told, Sam, told him, here's what the Lord told Samuel, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you that they are rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. Yes, yes. And they have done from, and they, as they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt, until this day, forsaking me and forsaking others, Father God, and, and serving other gods as they are doing. Yes. Now listen to them, yes. but warn them solemnly, Hallelujah. and let them know that the king, what the king who will reign over them will do. Yes, Lord. And here is what we as preachers and teachers of the word of God need to be doing. Yes, yes, yes. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. Yes, Lord. Tell the people exactly what God tells you to tell them. Don't tell the people what you want to tell them. Tell the people what God tell, told you to tell them. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what Samuel did. And I'm sure if you continue to read on that story, yes. you'll see how that went. Mm -hmm. Of course, these people got their king, they got their, what they desired, and all of a sudden now they start crying. Lord, I, the king will kill me, man. Amen. Uh, and why did we ask for this king? Come on. Well, going back to 1 Timothy, yes, Lord. these are the things that Paul was admonishing Timothy Hallelujah. to make sure that you stick to what you were taught. Hallelujah. Don't allow yourself to be shifted off of the yes. fundamental truth yes. of the gospel. Hallelujah. Don't allow what is happening in our modern society today, like I touched on before, God does not accept homosexuality. God does not accept adultery. God does not accept anything that he says he didn't accept. So we're going to have, as people of God, we, there's, the time is coming when we're going to have to stand up for things that are going to be very, very against what people want us to mm -hmm. believe or say. <clears throat> yeah. They want us to accept these things and God's word says, no, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Timothy's time, like I said, this, this group, Diana, Diana, the goddess, they wanted, they were trying to get Timothy to, to I love that type of doctrine to mingle in. You know, it's not hurting anybody. No, but it's wrong. Yeah. And Paul was there to admonish Timothy over and over, stick to it. Stick to your conviction. Stick to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. So just stick to it, stick to it. Don't change your path. Don't get off of the path. Always keep going forward. Be blameless. Let people know who's going to work, who wants to be in the office of a bishop, that they have to fit these qualifications. Because it's not about them, it's about the kingdom of God. In closing tonight, I want to touch on the last aspect of, the, of this chapter. The word bishop is a word that is descriptive of an office or a position. The term elder refers to the, the, the stature and maturity of spiritual experience that a person who fills that office must possess. A leading characteristic of a bishop must be self-control. We see that in Titus chapter 1, verses 5 and 7. Also, bishops and pastors, they are the spiritual leaders. Elders and deacons are what's called practical leaders. Amen. Practical leaders, are, uh, the pastors need practical leaders within yes. the congregation right. to help the work of the ministry so that the pastors or the bishops can give attention to studying the word and making sure that the people are edified to the kingdom of God. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 to 12 unveils the qualifications for the office of the deacons. Yes, yes. Deacons, as like bishops, elders, are appointed servants. Deacons are appointed and are anointed in the same way. Hallelujah. Bishops, elders, are appointed and anointed for service in the kingdom of God. Deacons are charged with the, temp with, with the temporal welfare of the local church as the bishops are with its spiritual welfare. We see that in Acts chapter 6 and verses 1 through 7, where the disciples chose seven 
deacons to carry out the functions of the works of the ministry.